First question, what drew you to this project? Well, I wrote my first story about Garth of Isar 25 years ago. Right. And I've always been fascinated by the character. I, I, that, in that episode, at the end there, when, he's, when Garth of Isar is, is coming out of his insanity, the medicine's taking hold, and he, uh, there's such nobility to that character. Right. And Stephen Hatt's performance was just so brilliant. And I wanted to know, I wanted to know why was he Kirk's hero? What was this big battle of Axanar? I mean, it basically created the Federation, is what they said. I mean, that's been retconned, so it's right. So we say we basically have it as the the victory at Axanar saved the Federation. Right. Right. Um, it's just a fascinating story. It's a fascinating piece of history that we know nothing about. We've never seen this period of history in Star Trek, and so it's just ripe to, for a story to be told where we're not recreating anything. We're we're creating. From, the, from these seeds, we're creating a whole new Star Trek time period. Now in the future history of Kelvar Garth, does it weird you out at all playing this character? It's like, you know what's coming around the corner, so... So, I, Garth of Visar is a, uh, it's a... It's a classic tragedy story. Right. Right? So here's this great hero um, who has this great fall, but we also will be telling the story of after... Uh, uh, whom God's destroyed. What what happens when Garth's fully recovered? Oh. So we're filming a couple vignettes with the Star Trek Phase Two crew in October that uh, will serve as bookends to Axanar and uh, about Kirk and the Enterprise going back to pick Garth up and bring him back to Starfleet uh, Command uh, after he's been re fully rehabilitated. And what what is that what is that like? What is that like for Garth, who's right. lost this? You know, we, we posit he's lost ten years of his life. He doesn't remember anything about this time period and what is it like for Kirk this is his hero right and uh, so we're going to tell that story that story in two parts one that will lead you into Axanar and then one that will kind of be the capstone to it after both of which take place in the time of Kirk Spock and McCoy oh thank you so and and you know it, it's it is a great story I mean we're telling the story really of Garth at his height in Axanar this is this is the greatest Starfleet captain, you know, uh, before Kirk. Um, what we're, that's the story we're telling. Um, but, I, you know, I'm a big fan of Babylon 5, All and right. there are two great intersecting stories there with Londo Malari and Jakar. And so I'm a big fan of re redemption stories. Right. And, and, and that is what this is. And, and it's a big, we're telling this big arc, that it, and it is. It's, it's the, the guy at his height that falls and recovers. That's, that's a fascinating story. That's, you know, that's a combination of both Londo Malari and Jakar. Right, and that's a pretty common thing to come back to, where it'd be Batman and Nightfall, like you said, Londo and Jakar and Babylon 5. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, in general, has a trekkie response been what you've expected it to be or what you've hoped for? The Trekkie response is what is uh, amazing. It's way better than we, we thought. You know, we thought people would like it, but uh, the response has been nothing short of spectacular. People are people are angry that it ends. <laughs> they don't want. They're like, wait, you don't stop. They want more. So it's uh, it's been great. I, I mean, I wish I had a nickel for every person who told me. I wish this was what was being made. In, in, you know, uh, right. right now for in, instead of JJ Trek. So, which is very, very, uh, a very nice compliment. It is. Kind of pigtailing onto that, um, uh, Pat, since Houston is Space City, how has the response from here been for you? Well, it's been great. I, you know, this is our first convention that we've done with uh, uh, all our cast here at a table, you know, and, 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 and panels every day. So right. it's really, we premiered at San Diego Comic Con, we did a screening at Las Vegas, so those are the last two weeks. But this week is a very different beast, and it's been really heartwarming. I mean, the Houston fans have just uh, come out in force, and they're so excited, and uh, they've been very gracious. So it's been a really, it's been an awesome opportunity for us. Terrific. Um, the last question: Where do you, we well, kind of already answered this, but a little more detail? Where do you see Axnar in the scope of the Star Trek franchise? I think. Um, I think Axanar and the whole time period we're telling this Four Years War, which was originally conceived in the FASA role-playing games from, from the 90s, right. uh, from the 80s and 90s, um, which we've just kind of expanded on. You know, we've taken these little snippets of 
of information and, and integrated it into Axonar and Prelude to Axonar. Um, I would love nothing more than to know that this kind of gets adopted into the Star Trek universe, into the Star Trek canon. Um, right. That would be a dream come true. Um, if not, I, I still think there's plenty of people who look at this and, and, and see it as just that, just another piece of the Star Trek universe. Um, it's something different and original and, and historical. And uh, which is kind of why we took the History Channel approach to Prelude to Axonar. It made a lot of sense. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, well, thank you, Alan.